Hi everyone. Good morning to all. So uh, we are. Uh, I'm going to take you through a uh, firmware development uh, uh, discussion during this webinar. So I would say that uh, you are not going to learn only how uh, firmware development uh, has to be done. Uh, along with that, you will learn very low level details of uh, uh, embedded C, as well as whatever you uh, require for a uh, firmware development and uh, how exactly you are, uh, what kind of resources you need to develop the firmware. And uh, then we will take it up uh, a one by one topic. So let, let's first discuss the content, okay? So that you will understand what we are going to cover in this. Yeah, so first uh, we are going to see uh, what is embedded system. And then uh, we will see the differences between microprocessor, microcontroller uh, and SOC. Maybe uh, uh, you have heard this terminology SOC uh, rarely, but the microprocessor, microcontroller, you may be aware of. But what exactly the difference between those? So we'll, we'll see this. And then we will see the difference between firmware and uh, software. May, many of you may have heard about uh, firmware and software, but what is the difference between that? So if you understand the difference and when you are working in that particular domain, it will be very easy for you to uh, uh, start with. And uh, then we will see, uh, so when, when I say firmware, so firmware uh, can be in two, uh, two sides of firmware. So one is driver development and another one is application development. So uh, we will see what is the difference between that. And then we are going to uh, 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 see the in-depth understanding of uh, some important uh, C keywords, okay? And then how exactly your C code starts in embedded C, I'm, I'm telling, not generic C. So how exactly your embedded C program starts? Uh, that we'll see. And uh, then we'll see the difference between generic C and uh, embedded C. So whatever generic C means, whatever code you have done till now, maybe in your graduations, uh, uh, so maybe that is general, generic C. And what is embedded C that we'll see and differences, okay? And uh, then uh, we'll see a few protocols, uh, what kind of protocols are available in the industry and uh, what protocols uh, uh, we will be using. And what, uh, so uh, in, in embedded system, these are the basic protocols. Okay, so we will see uh, all of these protocols uh, uh, in actual session, but uh, here we will uh, go through uh, SPI protocol and we'll try to understand uh, how exactly SPI protocol uh, uh, you can make use of and how it works. And then we will see the opportunities with the uh, uh, firmware side. So if you learn firmware development, uh, what kind of opportunities you have or uh, how it help you in your further career, okay? So uh, hope you understood the content. So let's uh, start one after another, okay? So embedded system. Maybe uh, uh, knowingly or, or unknowingly, you have, uh, all of you may have used embedded system, right? or everybody is having a, a mobile phone that is also embedded system. And if you have a remote control, small remote com control or any uh, game gadget or TV, whatever you have, right? So uh, uh, small gadget, you can say, those are embedded systems, all of them are embedded system. But if you see your laptop or your desktop, uh, that is not embedded system the, because uh, yeah, you will see the difference why we call uh, them as embedded system and why this laptop desktop is not called as embedded system. Okay, so uh, before embedded system, let's try to understand what is the system. What is the system? So, system is a generic terminology uh, which we will use throughout, means you in your college or school, we have some system. Okay. A government policies to create any government policies, we have some system. So it's an arrangement where all of its components work together to perform a specific task. Okay, system is an arrangement where all of its components are perform one or more defined tasks. Then what is embedded system? Embedded system is a combination of software and hardware which is designed to perform a specific task or to perform a specific task in large system. Let's assume, uh, or let's understand your remote control. What is the job of remote control? It only controls your uh, other device, means uh, remote device from anywhere, right? So uh, from some, some, for some distance, okay? So remote control is job to control the remote device. 
and if you take ac what is the job of ac its its job is to uh, provide the cooling effect in your indoor right indoor area and you take a refrigerator its job is to cool the uh, items or food items whichever you place inside uh, your refrigerator washing machine its job is to uh, just wash the cloths whatever you are whatever you put inside right so those are specifically designed i cannot use washing machine for uh, ac purpose i cannot use uh, ac for refrigerator purpose the purpose of a specific device is specific only okay it is designed for a particular task but uh, if you take laptop with laptop you can play the game you can play audio video you can code you can browse you can do lot many things not only specific task right that's why that is not embedded system okay it won't perform a specific task it it performs all general task laptop or desktop okay so that's why that is a, a generic system that is not embedded system hope you understood this difference now if i design a embedded system what characteristics i need to follow yeah so characteristics of my embedded system basically it should be low cost if you take remote control it's hardly uh, some 100 bucks right so low cost and uh, run with specific time let's say i press a remote control button to change the channel my tv channel and if it change the channel tomorrow or change the channel after 10 minutes do you accept you will not accept right so it has to run within a specific time it should be efficient it should be stable uh, reliable i should know that if i press volume button only volume has to be controlled not other other functionalities okay and it should perform a specific task okay means from remote control is to control a uh, tv remote control is to control the tv and ac remote control is to control the ac not interchange right so it has to perform a specific task and it should consume less power that's why most of your uh, i'm not telling all most of your embedded systems uh, run on battery yeah so these are the characteristics of your embedded system then what is the difference between microprocessor microcontroller and soc okay we will we will discuss about how firmware developer uh, has to develop the firmware so we will discuss that but before that we have to understand all of this if you don't understand this and jump on to development it will be uh, difficult for you because you will see different different terminologies while going through some design documents and uh, you have to uh, go forth and back uh, to understand what is this and what is that so instead of that before before that only you prepare your groundwork and then go for development okay yeah that's why we have to understand this now if i am working on microprocessor side so what kind of work i will do what kind of microprocessor what microprocessor will do and why what microcontroller will do what is soc all these things you have to understand so microprocessor so this is your microprocessor and all these components are external components which are connected to it through some buses these are some buses you may have seen your uh, in your curriculum uh, you may have seen you may have some some subject where you have a microprocessor and uh, other components are connected through some buses okay so what is microprocessor it is an ic that contains only a cpu it means your microprocessor will have only a cpu it doesn't have anything inside that okay it does not contain any other components like ram rom or any other components in this particular package okay this package have only microprocessor which will do only operation so microprocessor again your cpu cpu is uh, inside that cpu you have alu uh, multiplex uh, some other other component which will do some processing okay but that whole thing is cpu only then but microprocessor alone uh, with uh, alone microprocessor what you will do you cannot do anything you need some external components like serial port you need timers you have, you need gpio ports io ports okay you need ram rom might to see spi or any any other uh, some ethernet so you need lot many things to uh, get benefit of your microprocessor right 
So all these things you have to connect externally to your microprocessor to perform a specific task, right? So what is general uh, example for that? Let's see. So uh, whatever desktop or uh, PC you have, right? So inside that you have this particular chip or uh, CPU. This is your uh, microprocessor where in on your motherboard you can see uh, this particular component is connected with all other external components means ram rom different components will you will be having right so it will be connected with throw some buses some bulk buses you can see okay and as you have th this particular processor is powerful processor means it will do lot many operations gaming operations it, it will take a lot of power right so this is a powerful uh, processor and whatever component connected to it, let it be your display, let it be uh, your RAM, let it be ROM or X, some hard disk, okay, and some ethernet, uh, some, some component which is connected to it, all those are powerful components. Okay, so all those are powerful component means it needs more power, okay, to perform some task. So therefore, microprocessors devices are power consuming devices and if you build anything on top of this your uh, hardware or your uh, component will be a bulkier that's why your laptop is bulky your desktop is bulky okay so yeah so the microprocessor presents themselves with a high processing capacity and un upgradable memory means you can uh, have 4 GB RAM, 8 GB RAM, you can upgrade it, okay? And you have hard disk, one terabyte, 500 GB, whatever. So, and this can be used for software, website development or game development, okay? And not only this, there are many things and people around the world doing lot many things uh, with uh, your laptop or desktop or what, what, uh, or whatever, comp whatever system they have lot many things even we don't know what they are doing so its functionalities are unlimited okay this is all about microprocessor then what is microcontroller so uh, yeah microcontroller uh, are single ic you can say uh, micro microcontroller is a single ic where you have all of the components whatever we have just discussed right all of those components are within the ic itself okay so that is a single package where you have everything that's why that is a mini computer individually individually microcontrollers are complete and self-sufficient you no need to connect externally any hardware to uh, uh, i mean uh, yeah any uh, uh, hardware to it some extra extra ram or extra memory you want to connect okay they all have essential components uh, to perform tasks like ram rom timer serial ports io ports uh, i2c controller spi controller you ought to put any peripheral controller all those are there within your single package hope you understood this so whatever just now we discussed uh, in that processor uh, uh, in the processor uh, will have other components connected externally but here it's not like that your core will be there means processor core will be there along with that all other components are internally packaged okay so this is how it looks like so if this is a package if you say uh, this is your single chip inside this chip you will have a core you have rom ram some peripherals and some controller controllers here it is not shown so those are connected to uh, this processor internally and this is a single package you can say this is a single package okay, nothing is externally connected okay yeah so this these are based, why these buses means uh, to get the uh, to communicate with the peripherals to communicate with your memory we need the buses okay yeah so this is how it looks like your microcontroller so uh, you can see this is a single package single chip okay but inside this chip you have a core you have ram rom everything then 
what is this so these pins are exposed for the developer to connect means let's say uh, i have i2c controller inside so i have only controller but uh, i can use different sensors right uh, so i may have some temperature sensor i may have uh, some camera sensor i may have some uh, motion sensor right so uh, you, you you may have different sensors but all those different sensors will communicate uh, uh, with the, your I, i2c controller and i2c controller will com will communicate with the processor to do certain operations so that's why these pins are exposed to you so that you can connect your component and get the work done whatever work you want to do so that's why these are exposed to uh, developer to make use of it okay so uh, they don't uh, need any external components to perform any task they are well suited for compact and embedded devices that's why these are you you don't need any external components so that's why these are well suited for embedded system or embedded devices so but uh, here uh, you know that uh, yeah, as we discussed uh, in this whatever ram rom all those components you have right those are not uh, that much powerful compared to your uh, previous case in processor case in processor you have uh, very powerful devices you can communicate your processor can communicate with very powerful devices but in microcontroller it's not like that so i want to have a single chip where i need everything inside the chip as well as i need those components powerful so for that uh, there is a hybrid uh, system uh, created Uh, based upon this uh, microprocessor and microcontroller that is soc system on chip somebody call sil silicon on chip okay this is system on chip so basically everything complete system will be on your chip this is a single chip if you see and here you have a cpu which is more powerful you have a digital signal processor which is more powerful you have a gpu which will uh, perform your graphics related pro gaming uh, processing and which is also again it's very powerful okay uh, you just think about your mobile phone you just think about your mobile phone you have you can play audio video okay you can play the games you can do lot many big processing whatever you are doing nowadays on your system means even laptop desktop same thing you are able to do on your mobile phone itself you have word processing you have uh, uh, browser uh, you have lot many things okay along with that you can communicate means a modem this is for uh, your communication you have wifi you have bluetooth you have location gps gprs you have io ports you have image signal processing again you have a security system so all these all these powerful systems are placed in a single chip that's why this is a system on chip and you cannot call it as microcontroller or you cannot call it as microprocessor it is a combination of both hope you understood the differences now if you see in a single uh, slide what is the difference then you can see here uh, this is a processor which is uh, your package and all other components are externally connected to it and here you can see that this is a single package this is a single package where all the components are internally interconnected within a single ic and here also same thing as your microcontroller but this is microcontroller okay this is microcontroller but the components which are present inside this those are very powerful components you can compare with this also very powerful component okay so this is the difference let's move on to next topic uh yeah sorry uh, before that uh, let's see where exactly we will use it Uh, sorry, I'm running out of time. Okay, yeah. So uh, applications, uh, yeah, you may have. Uh, 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 as we discussed, all of these we have discussed applications like a uh, uh, laptop or desktop. You can use for gaming, web browsing, document creation, and your microcontroller will be used for uh, camera, washing machine, AC, all those things, right? And uh, internal structure we have discussed already, and uh, cost. 
uh, when you talk about your uh, laptop or desktop it's a uh, highly cost cost um, costly and uh, your microcontrollers or embedded devices are low cost and power consumption is high here here low here memory is you can have expandable memory and uh, it will be uh, more and here it will be very less memory and internal storage hard disk you can have some terabytes also but here you cannot have more than mbs okay and peripherals uh, these are the peripherals usb uart high speed ethernet you can use here and here uh, very uh, limited uh, peripherals you can use okay and the size of the registers are 32 bit 64 bit and here uh, till 32 bit only we can use and who can provide uh, from where we can get uh, this microprocessor and microcontroller means uh, these are the companies who will provide uh, intel amd kind of uh, provides the uh, microprocessor and uh, microcontroller will be provided by atmel Tex texas and uh, st microelectronics microchip they will provide uh, microcontrollers Let's move on to next topic, uh, firmware versus software. Uh, this is very important to understand. Uh, in olden days, yeah, there is a, uh, uh, we can clearly say there is a difference between firmware and software. But nowadays, uh, as time is going, right? So firmware and software, you cannot differentiate because both are nearly same. But let's understand uh, in olden days, how, how it was. So firmware is also a software, but it is written in a uh, EEP ROM or flash memory, which you cannot erase or which you cannot modify as easy as uh, your software. Okay. So if you have written some C code, let's say, you can modify it very easily. If you have written some game, you can modify it very easily. But firmware is not like that. So firmware, to modify firmware, you have to use some special technique to do that. Okay. But for software, it is not required. Okay, so firmware is typically used as low level software that operates a specific single purpose device like a TV, washing machine, AC, remote control. Okay, yeah, this is what we have discussed. So uh, there was very less storage to store the software, but now flash memory is being used to store the big software. This flash memory size is being uh, increased day by day. So uh, you can store big software also in firmware, in, in case of firmware. So I'm again telling firmware and software both are same. But here, why it is called firm, firmware means uh, if you flash into a flash memory, if you put your firmware into a flash memory, then it's very difficult to erase or modify it. So it is very firm. That's why it is a firmware. That software is very firm. That's why it is firmware. Okay, so uh, in, in case of firmware, there is no operating system to run. That's why it is called bare metal. Firmware is also called as bare metal because it won't, uh, it doesn't involve any operating system to run. Okay, and software. So software basically present in your uh, devices file system. So uh, let's say you, you have a hard disk and in hard disk, you have some file system. So you're, in your hard disk, you have some file system and there basically you will store your software, whatever code you write, whatever game you have, whatever application you have, you will be storing in file system. And when you want to execute, it will be loaded from file system into RAM and it will get executed, right? That is why it is software. Embedded software implements higher level functionalities and uh, features of the device. Embedded software, we are, we are talking about software. In embedded also, there will be a software, not only firmware, okay? Embedded software implements a higher level functions and features of the device. Since they are highly sophisticated in software, since they are highly sophisticated, embedded software can be overwritten by using high level programming languages like C++, Java. C is not called high level, it is a middle level, right? So uh, by using Python also, you can write embedded code, embedded software. In many modern devices, there is an operating system involved such as uh, Android, Linux, or some iOS, some operating system involved in many modern devices for soft, in, in case of software. 
what is the difference between a, a firmware application and a, a firmware driver we'll see this now let's try to understand uh, uh, you bought a new car okay you bought a new car uh, but you don't know driving so you have to hire a driver right so you have to hire a uh, driver to drive your car then you can sit back as a passenger and uh, you can make use of that particular car similarly you have a component you have some sd card you have some flash memory you have some ram uh, which is hardware just a hardware but to communicate with that you need some low level driver to be written okay so driver is basically uh, which will interact with your hardware directly so firmware driver is we make use of any embedded components we need a driver to communicate with it first so that is what driver driver is required to communicate with any component so it is low level driver which is written to update and configure a specific register of the peripherals so you, if, if 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 you have ram rom or any component any i2c peripheral anything right so they will have some registers to control it to control a particular hardware you have some specific registers and to con to write something into the register to read out of that register you need low level driver that is firmware driver here there is no operating system in what okay firmware means there is no operating system in what and uh, application like your passenger right so i can make use of uh, hardware through the dry driver means driver will provide certain apis some certain functions which you will call in your application and you you will do whatever task you want to get it done by your uh, hardware so let's say uh, 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 you have a remote control and in remote control you have a specific uh, if i press one i have to get only uh, one functionality whatever is there that functionality only has to be uh, performed two means other when i press volume up volume up functionality volume down but all of these are related to some pins gpio pin so if i write a gpio driver and provide some api to application developer then based upon his key press he will write his own code but he will make use of my driver code like we have printf scanf functions right we are making use of those functions those functions are already written implemented we are just making use of it if you want to print some string we will give percentile s if you want to print some integer we will percentage d like that so that is application and uh, those are libraries but uh, i'm just uh, trying to make you easily understand those are not driver apis those are libraries but here we will provide some driver apis so basically driver uh, is the guy who will talk to your hardware uh, directly and application will make use of driver apis to communicate with the hardware okay so uh, he will just specify which which register he need to modify application guy application will specify which register to mod modify and which bit to be modified then your low level driver will do on behalf of your application okay you everybody no need to write the low level driver then let's understand uh, important uh, uh, keywords and you may be knowing all of this you may be knowing all of this but let's understand in depth how it works so basically uh, you have to understand storage classes in depth understanding i am saying in depth again and again it's very important to understand how all of these storage classes will work so in c you have four storage classes basically auto register static and extern these are the storage classes right so all of these storage classes are uh, differs in only these of uh, four parameters storage where exactly it is stored scope within which uh, i mean till what extent you can access it that is scope and what is the life till what time that particular variable is available in memory means uh, whatever memory is created for that till what time it will be available okay it's life then initial value if i assign some value then no problem but if i want to assign some value then which value it will take okay all of you know this but we will see uh, the differences and uh, this is c memory layout 
whatever your memory is there right so that memory is divided into uh, these sections so like uh, stack section heap section data section code or text section okay so auto variable auto variable uh, will be stored what is the storage means auto variable will be stored in stack okay so now you have to understand that uh, this code section will be mapped to your flash memory flash memory sorry okay flash memory and uh, these sections will be mapped to your ram most of the time okay this will be mapped to your ram so uh, that's why uh, this core section whatever stored in core section you cannot modify if you try to modify you will get a uh, segmentation fault uh, this also comes into this this also comes into flash and uh, this if you try to modify you won't get any problem so uh, now let's understand where exactly this auto variable will be stored and what is the all these parameters auto variable will be stored into a stack and its storage is a uh, stack as we discussed and the scope is within a block where exactly you declare right so within that block only you can access you cannot access outside of that block and life is within that block only once you enter into the block this particular variable automatically created once you come out of the block it will be destroyed and if you won't assign any value then garbage value it will take uh, register variable yeah it will be registered in the cpu uh, it will be stored in the cpu register and uh, other parameters are same okay static variable static again you have local static and global static local static means if you declare uh, so this both will be stored in data section only data section maybe this okay so if you uh, declare static variable within a function then its scope is within that function only you cannot access that static variable outside of that function but um, whatever memory is created for that particular variable it will be there throughout the program till your program is in memory it will be there and uh, if you won't assign any value then by default it will take zero how it will take by default zero we will we'll see and uh, global variable uh, basically uh, if you declare global uh, static variable globally then that is a global static variable and uh, uh, you can access that within the file but not in other file okay and its life is uh, throughout the program default value is zero and uh, then next is external variable external so these both are same but here its scope is you can access external variable in other file also but static variable you cannot access in other file let's see the differences okay so here sorry. actually i'm running out of time yeah let's see, let's see here uh, this is auto variable you can declare auto variable without without any keyword and you can specify the keyword also there won't be any difference okay so auto within a function if you declare any variable without any storage class then that is by default auto variable and if you specify auto then also it is a auto variable you generally you may get a question like uh, like this uh, here uh, this is main program here i am calling some test function and a test function when it is called right so this is the test function and here you can see there is a variable uh, i have declared here uh, i'm printing some value and uh, returning the address of this variable so you are trying to access this variable outside of that function so when you call this function it will be called and here when you are returning so when you call stack will be created for this function when you return that stack will be destroyed but what you are doing you are trying to access the address of this particular variable and trying to modify it but the stack is already destroyed means that memory is not there for this variable so you will get into issue so this kind of questions you will get in your interview so this is not correct you should not do this and then uh, about register variable let's say register so uh, if you declare register variable within a function if you declare a register variable within a function then fine no problem if it is register is available cpu register is available then it will be stored in cpu register if not then it will be stored in stack no problem but you cannot declare register variable globally your compiler will throw uh, compiler will throw error but why it will throw error why compiler is designed in that way 
uh, you have very limited register so in arm let's say only uh, at a time in, you may have uh, you may have 16 17 registers are available okay so you if you declare 17 global variables let's say and all of the registers are uh, occupied for your single program then other programs will not get registered to do any operations means your cpu will not get a register to do any operations that's why your compiler is designed in, uh, in such a way that to not allow register variable declaration. We can declare uh, other, other things also I have, but uh, uh, let's see. So as you know, uh, we have not discussed anything about uh, uh, this heap section. Whatever malloc, calloc, realloc you do, right? So free all these operations, all those things, dynamic allocations and uh, free will be done on top of uh, uh, this heap section and uh, the static variable and uh, extend variables are getting stored in data section if it is initialized by some value if it is initialized by some value it will be stored in dot data section if it is not initialized by some value then it will be stored in dot basis section why it will be stored why because if uninitialized static and uh, extend variables are stored in dot data section during my program execution your system will take all these variables which are stored here and initialize them with zero value. Initialize them with zero value. That's why a separate section is created. Okay, this is also important question in your interview. Okay, RO data sections. What is RO data section? We'll see. So we have discussed about this code will be stored in code section or text section. This we have discussed. Okay, and why register variable global declaration is not possible that we have discussed because limited registers are available for the cpu and cpu needs registers to do any operation and if you globally declare then its life uh, will till your program that's why uh, you cannot hold your register till your program that's why it is not possible static variable cannot be declared within a structure this is also a very important question which you will get in your interview static variable you cannot declare within a structure why because let's assume uh, you declare one static and non-static variable one static variable and another one is non-static variable and if you declare a variable for that uh, particular uh, uh, structure within a function static has to be stored in data section but other variable auto kind of variable has to be stored in stack section and you are declaring variable for the structure within a function means it has to go into stack but inside that structure you have a static that has to go into data so there is a conflict this is one of the reason but there are many reasons uh, because of uh, those reasons we cannot declare static variable within a structure compiler will throw you error so how can we access static functions if we declare static functions functions are global scope okay but a global scope means you can access everywhere. But if you specify, if you declare that function as static function, then you cannot access that function in other file. But if I want to access that static function in other file, how can I access it? Static function in other file, you can access. How can you access? Means uh, this is your static function. You have to declare one function pointer and to that function pointer you can assign this static function address and uh, this function pointer you can extern in other file and you can use it you can call this function means whatever function you have declared static function right by using function pointer you can call in other file constant variables where does constant variables will be stored so uh, basically constant variables you can have these many different types local constant variable assigned unassigned global constant variable assigned unassigned and global constant variable assigned and unassigned are initialized uninitialized you can say initialized uninitialized so by using pointer you can modify the constant variable but what kind of constant variable you can modify? It depends on storage. 
it depends on storage where exactly it is stored so your constant variable will be stored in ro data section or in uh, r in dot bss section or it will be stored in stack section you cannot say that my constant variable will be stored in text section or dot ro section only it will be uh, stored in different sections based upon declaration if you declare your constant variable within a function then it will be stored in stack section irrespective whether you are assigning or not assigning or initializing or, un or uninitializing it will be stored in stack section only so when it is stored in stack section that is read write section you can modify through pointer there won't be any problem and a global and static constant variable if you initialize with some value then that will be stored in ro data section that will be stored in ro data section means in flash memory you can say ro data section then you cannot modify if you try to modify you will get segmentation fault and uninitialized means it will be stored in dot bss section this is again a read write section so you can modify it then uh, yeah string literals will be stored in ro data section only so uh, i am covering these because uh, these are very important uh, interview questions uh, which uh, always confuses us okay and uh, what is volatile variable volatile variable will uh, uh, basically uh, let's say you are uh, uh, you have a temperature driver uh, where you are always getting the temperature updated temperature okay and i have a application in my in my mobile phone right i have application which will show the temperature okay so there is a memory which is shared between my application and my and my temperature driver temperature driver is always modifying that and my application is just using not modifying it so if that is the case if you are just using and not modifying then your com what compiler will do is it will you, you see this uh, this particular program here i have x globally declared and i am using x but i am not modifying x in my code okay if you see my code i am just using x here 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 i have used but i have not modified so what your compiler will do is it will take this value from memory because it is stored in data data section right it will take value from memory and store into some register or some cache memory who will who will do that optimization compiler and whenever you are using it will take that value from the register okay it won't it won't take the value from actual data section so you won't get updated value here you are not modifying but my temperature driver is there that guy is modifying this variable but what compiler will see you are not modifying here so i will optimize it but i know as a programmer that this particular x is shared with my uh, temperature driver temperature driver is modifying it so i know as a programmer that's why i have to declare this as volatile so that my compiler should not optimize this particular variable and always take the value from memory not from cache or not from register so that is the use of volatile variable so startup code or walk through so uh, actually you have a linker script where uh, uh, whenever you compile your uh, code right so final stage is the uh, linking stage uh, that stage will tell uh, your program that this is the first function to be executed so a, a linker script will be there and that linker script will tell that this is the entry for my function and this particular function will be executed here you can see uh, that a zero fill so that whatever stored in dot bss right all those will be uh, assigned with some zero value okay so this reset function will start executing it will execute and it will jump to this copy data in it so here copy data in it uh, it will take something so we can discuss this later but uh, copy data in it and then after immediately it will go to loop copy data in it and here uh, it will do some blah 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 uh, then uh, here it will go to loop fill zeros bss it will fill all the bss variables with zero okay and then at the final stage it will call your main code it will branch to your main program this is how exactly your uh, startup code uh, will help to start your main program and before that it will 
fill all dot bss uh, variable with zero what is the difference between uh, embedded c and generic c so uh, basically uh, if you see more or less both are same uh, but the very basic difference is uh, very basic difference is uh, uh, embedded c will be used for your embedded uh, devices or microcontroller programming and uh, generic c will be used to write any general program uh, which runs an operating system so more or less both are same but there are some features uh, uh, introduced in embedded c which is uh, like uh, memory areas means uh, uh, you, you, there will be a mapping between uh, uh, whatever peripheral you have and virtual address whatever virtual address you have and whatever physical address you have right so there will be a mapping areas and some IO register mapping will be there and fixed point representation, uh, a new feature is added into embedded C. Other than this, most of the code which we write in embedded that is on bits means by using bitwise operator, we write most of the code in embedded C. We use uh, pointers and bitwise operator most of the time. And uh, we won't make use of any uh, printf, scanf kind of uh, library functions, which is uh, uh, luxury uh, things available for uh, generic C, but here we won't uh, do that, right? And uh, embedded C programs cannot take user input. Like you, you give the user input some five, six, and then you, you will get the output or some sorting. You will give some value and you will get the output. So that kind of flexibility here you don't have. Whatever you want to do, you have to uh, write in your code, and only you can give some uh, uh, user input through some external events like press this button. Okay, button press kind of uh, event you can pass uh, from user side. Okay, to perform a specific task. Okay, C uh, uh, can use all of your system resources, but embedded C have very limited resources like RAM and ROM, very less memory to perform the operations. So communication protocols, basically uh, we have many communication protocols like uh, Ethernet, USB 3.0, 2 2.0, RS485, RS232, I2C, SPI. Okay, so all these are serial communication protocols. But major differences is uh, how much data it means, what is the speed? What is the speed of that particular uh, uh, protocol? And how much, in how much distance we can use that? If you see, I2C and SPI, these can be used with in very less distance, means only 10 feet or 18 feet distance you can use it. But Ethernet, you can use in 1600 feet. RS-485, you can use 4000 uh, feet, means if your components, if you, if you have two devices connected uh, to this much extent far, right? You can communicate that by using RS-485 or Ethernet kind of protocol. Uh, so Ethernet will be used in network communication. Uh, USB will be used in mass storages, keyboard, mouse, you know, camera, printer, speakers, right? And uh, RS-485 will be used for data acquisitions and control systems uh, in home automation, industrial automations will use RS-485. Uh, and uh, uh, this RS-232 will be used in modem, mouse, and uh, instrumentation i2c yeah we will use in microcontroller communications like whatever we have seen and spi we will use for sensors display and uh, some serial flash so if if you take uh, this is uh, this is a small board of your uh, uh, any embedded device so here you have a mcu you have display you have some sensor flash and some eprom so on board devices, if you want to communicate, on board devices, if you want to communicate, you basically use SPI I2C kind of protocols. If there are some off board devices like this, okay, devices are uh, connected externally somewhere, okay, and big, big difference, uh, sorry, distance, right? So here you will be using Ethernet, RS-232, RS-485 kind of protocol. So in longer distances, we will use a different protocols and in shorter distances like onboard devices, we will use I2C SPI kind of protocols. 
okay this you have to understand major differences where to use which protocol so spi communication protocol so here uh, we will just see uh, what is this and uh, we are not going to uh, understand the code level but we will understand theoretically how exactly spi communication protocol is yeah uh, we have discussed that uh, my mcu is there and some sensors are there and they will communicate but how it exactly it will communicate let's assume that there is one master and uh, multiple slaves means you can have multiple slaves also uh, slaves means sensors ep ram sd card display wi fi bluetooth anything right so most of the uh, other embedded peripheral or you can have your other mcu also as a slave device okay so uh, to communicate with that this is master let's say this guy controls all of them so to communicate with that uh, Uh, we are going for spi communication so spi communication will have four lines if you have multiple spi devices right if you have multiple spi devices then you have you will have other gpu uh, sorry uh, uh, gpio pins connected to it okay so but these three lines uh, are common for uh, Uh, not i mean uh, common means not, uh, it, it will not be used for this but again here also you will have separate line okay for mosi for miso and clock line also will be connected separately to this means as you are uh, sorry as your uh, uh, slave devices increases your number of lines also will be increases so here you have serial clock master out slave in master in slave out these are the pins and you will have a gpio pin of a master which will connect to chip select a slave select pin of your slave slave will have a slave select pin and that pin will be connected with your master through gpio okay so these are the four pins so what what is the use of this pin so if master wants to get the data from set slave then miso master in slave out slave will send the data out and master will get the data in okay so master will receive the data and master out slave in means master wants to send the data then it will use this particular pin clock clock is to basically synchronize the data between master and slave and the chip select uh, pin is to uh, chip select we call we call it as a Uh, slave select we call it as a nss again negative chip select okay so uh, this pin is used to select a particular device with which device your master wants to communicate okay let's say this master wants to communicate this particular slave you have multiple slaves let's assume but it wants to communicate with this particular slave in that case you have to pull this gpio pin low when it is pulled low this particular slave is selected now whatever communications you do this communication will go to this particular slave only how much means let's say uh, uh, means, yeah when you are using more number of lines means lot of space and a lot of uh, uh, metal will being used right so uh, how minimal uh, pins you can use in spi communication that depends so let's say master only wants to send the data to only one slave there is only one master and one slave master wants to send data to only one slave in that case you don't need this chip select line because this is the guy so you just directly do it ground so when you select it as a grounded then master can communicate with only this device and master only sending the data master is only sending the data then you no need of this miso line you need only mosi line clock line anyway you have to you need it okay to synchronize the data okay and here you can this is master and this is slave uh, here you can uh, select whether i want to send the lsb bit first or msb bit first this is msb sorry this is msb and uh, this is lsb if you want to send lsb bit first if you configure like that then this bit will be sent 
from master and this bit will be sent uh, from slave if both are communicating uh, simultaneously so when seventh bit is sent then this seventh bit is sent and it will be placed here so this will be pushed right side this will be pushed right side so this will be shifted here and your seventh bit will come here okay so like this uh, it will send all the 8 bit 8 bit communication and 16 bit communication you can do so in spi protocol you have full dex uh, there are different ways of communication full duplex half duplex and simplex communication so when full duplex uh, mosi and miso lines will be being used and uh, when it is a half duplex only one line being used okay one line will be used and another line will be uh, disconnected that is half duplex means when master wants to send the data master has to use that particular uh, pin and when slave wants to send the data master has to stop and a slave has to send the data but at a time both cannot communicate okay that is half duplex and simplex is only master is sending the data or only slave is sending the data not both way communication only one way communication that is simplex and how it happens means let's say uh, master sending the data when master send wants to send the data the data is placed in your transfer buffer and whatever content you have in transfer buffer that content will be placed in your shift register that is 8 bit shift register or 16 bit shift register and once your content is placed in shift register it will be uh, sent through this mosi line master out slave in that is transmitting when you are when you are receiving the data master in the data comes to your shift register once shift register is completely filled then that content will be placed into your rx buffer uh, that is receive buffer and from receive buffer your master will take the data through these buses and uh, all these components are used to control the spi communication SPI communication format based upon clock phase, clock polarity, and a data format. Data format means 16 bit format, 8 bit format. Uh, uh, that is data format. So, communication, uh, you have to uh, decide before communication only whether you want to communicate in 8 bit or 16 bit. Master and slave. Okay. And uh, based upon clock phase and clock polarity, uh, communication will start. How? Okay, during SPI communication, data receive and transmit operations are performed simultaneously. So that uh, shifting the data and sampling, okay. So the, the clock, serial clock synchronizes the shifting and sampling of the information on the data line. Shifting means sending, means sending the data. Sampling means getting the data from the line. Okay, receiving the data from the line. And communication format depends on clock phase, clock polarity and data format. Okay, and uh, they both has to agree in the same format to communicate. Okay, clock polarity. Let's say this clock polarity bit is set. When this bit is set, this clock pin has a high level ideal state. If there is no data transmission, then this clock polarity or some uh, this clock signal will always high. Okay, if there is no data transmission. If uh, it is reset, if it is zero, this particular bit is zero. These are register values, okay? If this uh, particular bit you made zero, and if there is no data transmission, then this is always low. When data transmission will start, right? So that time only this clock pulses you will be generated. And uh, clock phase. Clock phase tells this particular bit controls at which clock edge data has to be sampled by the slave or master okay sampled by the slave or master so at which clock edge let's see so let's say your clock polarity is one then starting bit is this means your clock will start like this and you are sending the data okay you are sending the data here this this particular data will be received uh, so here uh, this is the clock phase is equal to one so if it is one, when this particular bit is one, then uh, first edge of the clock, 
means data will appear data will come at the first edge of uh, first first edge of the clock you get the data and capture happens at the second edge means this is your first edge right so at first edge data will be sent and at the second edge you will receive the data means this is a reception you are getting the data here you are getting the data in second edge you are getting the data so data transmission happened at this particular edge one in one clock means this is the clock okay data transmission is happened at this edge but reception means data sampling is happened at uh, this particular edge okay clock polarity one means a rising edge you have to take the data and clock polarity zero means at falling edge you have to take the data a reverse of this is uh, when clock phase is equal to zero okay so initially uh, data will appear on the lines during second edge of the clock and capture happens at the first edge of the clock so here you assume that there is one clock is wasted okay because data will appear on second edge okay on second edge you got the let's say this is second edge here data is appeared now in first edge of my uh first edge of uh, uh, my clock i have to capture the data okay so i assume this is your first edge here you are capturing this is again first edge you are capturing this is first edge you are capturing okay because high to low right so this is first edge you are capturing so on first edge only you are capturing but second edge you are getting the data so yeah opportunities so believe me now if you are working in firmware side if you understood all of this firmware first of all before opportunity let's uh, let me tell you if you learn firmware development then you will be learning all the peripherals all the low level components uh, clock level everything you are understanding how exactly your hardware behaves right if you understand this then working on linux device driver working on application side is very very easy for you okay that is first thing then second uh, compared to your uh, software domain embedded uh, semiconductor domain is uh, uh, actually uh, less affected uh, domain in uh, uh, any situations in pandemic or recession any situations right less affected domain is always uh, semiconductor domain okay that's why uh, uh, learning semiconductor side is always better then what kind of opportunities you get so embedded systems actually so if you want to work on iot side iot means you have to know most of the protocols and uh, understanding this if you go if you have gone through this uh, particular course then working in iot side is not big deal because you learned here many things and uh, uh, there uh, actually it will be very easy for you to change and you can choose the domain as your professional career and uh, as we have seen uh, any component uh, whatever controller you have in your if you have customized the uh, board and if you have any controller on that you need to drive write the driver and when there is opportunity there is a uh, many many gadgets or many many uh, embedded devices coming uh, in the market and for them there is a lot of opportunity to write a firmware driver a lot of opportunity to write a firmware applications okay so that's why a very big uh, you know uh, area to explore okay and uh, there is a, a separate uh, another area which is called pre silicon and post silicon verification validation so verification validation basically done for i2c spi low level devices silicon means your chip whatever chip you have right that is silicon before making chip there is a, a big task every company will do and once they find that yeah, this design is good and we can manufacture the chip like this then actual soc or ic soc or chip you will get so when you are working on design there is opportunity to work when you get the actual chip then also you have a opportunity uh, to work 
so uh, pre silicon and post silicon verification validation uh, kind of opportunity lot many in market okay then sensors driver development if you are working on driver development for sensors whether it is in linux or uh, in uh, firmware side yeah definitely you need to understand low level details okay and uh, modeling and uh, simulation so whatever uh, hardware you are getting in the market so for that uh, actually it has to be as uh, i means always hardware will not be available so you have to write a software which actually work as hardware not exactly hardware but it works almost all the functionality of hardware will be implemented in software side so for that also you need to understand the firmware side and very low level of hardware so plenty of opportunities are available you only need to uh, understand the low level then it will help in your career okay so yeah so at the end little bit faster i have done but uh, because i was uh, uh, chasing the time so that's why so hope you understood and uh, hope this will help you uh, and uh, going forward if you just go through this particular course definitely you will learn a lot that is damn sure okay thanks for your time <laughs>